Hi, Mr. Richards here. Today's Grade 6, Unit 6, Lesson 16, Practice Problems Review on Two Related Quantities, Part 1. Question 1, here is a graph that shows some values for the number of cups of sugar, S, required to make X batches of brownies. So we have X batches of brownies and S cups of sugar, and you can see that also labeled on the graph there and there. Now complete the table so that the pair of numbers in each column represents the coordinates on the graph. Well, here's our x's and here's our x's. So when x is 1, our s, here our cups of sugar, appears to be halfway in between 0 and 1. Well, halfway between 0 and 1 is going to be a half. At 2, batches of brownies for x. That looks like 1 cup. For 3, Looks like one and a half. For four, looks like two. For five, it looks like two and a half. For six, that would be three. And lastly, for seven, looks like three and a half. What does the point 84 mean in terms of the amount of sugar and number of batches of brownies? Well, 84 would mean 8 batches of brownies is 4 cups of sugar. Now write an equation uh, that shows the amount of sugar in terms of the number of batches. It looks like we're using half a cup of sugar per batch. So our cups of sugar S is going to equal one half times the number of batches, which is represented by S, X. So S equals one half X. Now in question two, each serving of a certain fruit snack contains 90 calories. Han wants to know how many calories he gets from the fruit snacks. Write an equation that shows the number of calories C in terms of the number of servings N. Well, if each serving is 90 calories, the total number of calories C is going to equal 90 times the number of servings N. So one serving would be 90 times 1, 90 calories. Two servings would be 90 times 2, 180 calories. Now, Tyler needs some extra calories each day during his sports season. He wants to know how many servings he can have each day if all the calories come from the fruit snack. Ugh. Write an equation that shows the number of servings N in terms of calories C. If we take the original equation, C equals 90N, and here we're solving for N. We want N to equal something. So what do we need to do? We need to move the 90. Well, if I divide by 90 on both sides, because division is the opposite of multiplication, you're going to end up with C divided by 90 equals N because this will just cancel out. So C divided by 90 equals N is our equation here. So the number of servings you've had is how many of your calories you've had divided by 90. And so if you've had 90 calories, 90 divided by 90 means you've had one serving. If you've had 270 calories, 270 calories divided by 90 would mean you've had three servings and so on and so on. Now, Kieran uh, shops for books during a 20% off sale. What percent of the original price of a book does Kieran pay during the sale? Well, if it's 20% off and full price is 100%, 100 minus the 20% would be 80%. So she pays 80%. Now complete the table to show how much Karen pays for books during the sale. Well, if it costs a dollar 
and her sale price is 80% of the original, I can simply take the dollar and multiply by 80%, which is 0 0.80 as a decimal, and you get 80 cents. And if I multiply all these results by 80%, well, 2 times 80% would be $1.60. 3 times the 80% would be $2.40. $4 times the 80 cents, I'm sorry, the 80 per cent, hello, would be $3.20. $5 times the 80% would be $4. $6 times the 80% would be $4.80. $7 times the 80% would be $5.60. $8 times 80% would be $6.40. $9 times 80 cents would be $7.20. And lastly, $10 times the 80% would be simply $8. Write an equation that relates the sale price S to the original price P. Well, our sale price S is going to equal the 80% of the original price. You might also see it written S equals just simply 0 0.8 or 8 tenths P. If you want to, the place values to the only thing that's different there. 0 0.80, 80 hundredths, 0 0.8, 8 tenths. Same value, though, for those two numbers. Both equations work. Now, on graph paper, create a graph showing the relationship between the sale price and the original price by plotting points from the table. Well, if you had a sheet of graph paper, I don't, sorry, um, you could set this up so you have the original price on your x-axis down here, and this would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. See? Nicely done, right? And then you could have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And your uh, y-axis here is your sale price. And so $1 originally is about 80%, or 80 cents, I'm sorry. $2 originally is about $1.60. So in between 1 and 2, somewhere there. A little bit more than 1 and a half. 3 Dollars originally was two dollars and forty cents. So you're looking around here. Four dollars is three dollars and twenty cents, and you can just kind of go up and finish this graph here. Five would be four dollars, and you'll notice that it's looking like it's in the shape of a line because, well, it is. Six would be four dollars and eighty cents. Seven would be five dollars and sixty cents. Eight would be six dollars and forty cents, and this is why. Graph paper would be really useful, so you're not going through a table here. $9 originally is $7.20, and $10 is uh, $8 on sale. And yeah, you can visualize that there's kind of a line going here. It looks like it's a linear relationship. So as we look to evaluate the, each expression when x is 4 and y is 6, 6, whoops, let's try uh, using the pen here, 6 minus 4 to the third power plus y is 6. All right, you have to solve the inside of the parentheses first. You get 2 to the third plus 6. Take care of your exponent, 2 to the third. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8 plus 6 is 14. So a is 14. What about B? In B, we get 2 plus 4 to the third. Well, 4 to the third is 4 times 4 is 16 times 4 is 64. 2 plus 64 is 68. What about C? You get 2 to the fourth minus 2 times 6. 2 to the fourth is 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 which is 16, minus 2 times 6 is 12, you get 4. D is 1 half 
to the fourth power, which is one half times one half times one half times one half. That's a terrible one half. One times one times one times one is one. Two times two times two times two is 16. So you get one sixteenth. We'll come over here on the side for E. You get one to the fourth plus two to the yikes, sixth. One times one times one times one is one. Two to the sixth is two times two times two times two times two times two, which is, of course, 64. And one plus 64 is 65. And lastly, we have F. Two to the fourth divided by six to the second, or squared. Two to the fourth is 16. Six to the second, oh, not six, I made a mistake there. See, math teachers make mistakes too. You just have to erase it here and fix it. It's x squared, which would be 4 squared, which is 16. And 16 divided by 16 is 1. All right, let's move on to the next thing. Find 12 and 34 hundredths times 7 tenths. Show your reasoning. One way to look at this is 1,234 times 7. Now, of course, it's not 1,234. That's in the hundredth spot. And 7 is in the tenth spot. So we'll have to do some adjusting here at the end. But first, 7 times 4 is 28. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 2 is 23. 7 times 2 is 14 plus 2 is 16. 7 times 1 is 7 plus 1 is 8. Now we are in the hundredths and the tenths spot here. So if we multiply those two numbers together, we get the one thousandths spot, which means our answer needs to have something in the thousandths place. Well, if we go thousandths, hundredths, tenths, decimal point, our solution here is eight and 600, oops, 638 thousandths. Now, for each expression, write another division expression that has the same value and that can be used to help find the quotient. Then find each quotient. Well, you cannot have a decimal point in these second numbers, right? And so this is going to have to be a five. But if we went uh, times 10 there, we have to go times 10 there to make this 3,201 divided by five. Likewise, twice over, Twice over makes this 1,215 divided by 2. And again, twice over. Twice over makes this 1, or 137 and 5 tenths divided by 11. And so, as we use our long division skills to solve these, 6 times 5 is 30. Drop down the 2. No, five doesn't go into two, so we put a zero above the two. We can bring down the one, and that gives us four. Subtract the 20, and now we're going to have to use a decimal point here and some more zeros. You get one, bring down the zero. Five goes into 10 two times. Subtract the 10, you get a zero. So this is equal to 604 and two tenths. What about 1,215 divided by 2? Just put a couple decimal points, or decimal point and a couple zeros there just in case. It doesn't go into the 1. It goes into the uh, 2 six times because it goes into 12 six times. Drop down the 1. 2 doesn't go into 1. Put a 0 above the 1. Bring down the 5. 2 goes into 15 about seven times. Subtract the 14. You get a 1, and this is very similar. You have the zero, two goes into 10 now five times. Subtract the 10 and there's zero. So 607 and five tenths is your solution here. Likewise, we have the 11 on the outside, 137 and five tenths on the in. 
doesn't go into the 1, goes into 13 one time. Subtract 11, you get 27, goes in 2 times. Subtract 22, you get a 55, goes in 5 times. And you get a 0, so 12 and 5 tenths. That's it for these practice problems. Good luck.